Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Lewis McGivney. I'm one of the uh, community members within ESIP Semantic Technologies. And today, what we're going through is vocabulary creation within ESIP's Community Ontology Repository, otherwise known as CORE. C O R. Uh, what is CORE? Well, for those that don't know, CORE essentially enables community members uh, to try out semantic technologies, to understand their benefits, uh, some of their uses and, and benefits, and then explore applications. And uh, essentially, vocabulary creation is one of the tools which is offered within the core platform. And when I say platform, I mean platform. Uh, core consists of a number of, uh, you know, loosely coupled uh, essentially modules, parts of the, the larger system, where we have a underlying graph database, which obviously persists data, makes it queryable. Uh, we have a set of REST APIs, which sit on top of uh, that graph database um, and are encoded using the industry standard open API specification. And then on top of one of the primary application for core is the portal, which we're looking at just now. And essentially that stack there facilitates um, all of the current use cases which we have for core. As I said in this um, screencast, a short screencast, what we'll be covering is the vocabulary creation function within core. Uh, we will be covering the prerequisites for vocabulary creation, such as login, account creation and login. We're going to look at vocabulary creation. Uh, we'll progress to metadata creation for the resource, the vocabulary resource, and then we'll be looking at term sets, which are actually the terms which are encoded within vocabulary. Okay, so what you'll see when you when you navigate to core.esipfed.org is our two buttons, a landing page with two buttons here essentially with some documentation. You want to click on the left hand side which is access core and you end up at this uh, dashboard, this primary portal. And there's a lot going on here. You can see down the left hand side we've got a number of filters for browsing and navigating the resources which are already in core. Uh, as well as a table which essentially is a mechanism for browsing metadata associated with each resource, which has a unique IRI within the system. We can filter and search here, but really where you're going to want to go in order to think about vocabulary creation is you're going to want to either create an account if you don't already have one, or if you do have one, you're going to want to sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and use my account to sign in. Okay, and what you'll see is you're now you now have the option of executing various functions here. The first one's to upload an ontology. We're not covering that in this tutorial. We're creating vocabulary. So we'd be creating we'd be utilizing the create vocabulary button, the second option. Third option here is creating mappings between resources, very, very useful feature. And in this case, I'm an administrator on the platform, so I have an admin button with certain uh, functions which can be invoked from there. We're looking at button number two, create vocabulary. So let's click on that. And what you can see here is a, a, a window which essentially requests from you information pertaining to the ontology owner, the IRI you want to associate with the resource you're creating, the visibility of the resource and the status of the resource. These are all fields which are populated below. So we start off with who won the ontology within the ESIP core. This is a community resource and I don't want it tied directly to myself for the purposes of this tutorial. You can see here that I can either select myself as a user and hence the owner, or I'm associated with various organizations in ESIP core. I'm going to associate this resource with the ESIP Federation, which is a unique organization. There we go. 
Um, below, you, we, we are now required to input data to, relating to the IRI construction. Uh, you can either have core assist you in the IRI creation, which is which looks as follows. You would end up with an IRI, which is HTTP protocol domain core dot esip fed dot org forward slash on forward slash esip forward slash the short name of your resource. You can see there's a bug in this system just now. We're appending an additional forward slash. And in order to address that, what I'm going to do as a one off here is create a unique IRI, which is essentially this one minus the forward slash um, and then the short name of the resource. So if I go to my IRI, I can enter the previously copied IRI and it's looking for the actual resource name, which gets me around to uh, what is the source material I'm using from which I'm going to derive the vocabulary. Okay, and let's have a look at that. So I'm using um, Grand State Valley, uh, Grand Valley State University's Wind Energy Glossary, Technical Terms and Concepts. This was initially originally developed by Eric Edward Norman over the Grand Valley State Uni. Uh, very, very nice, succinct document, very well presented with some nice recommended citations, some additional metadata, which we'll be using within the ontology metadata. Uh, entry that I had uh, mentioned earlier on in the screencast. But as you can see here, we're looking for a primary name and this is the Wind Energy Glossary. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that Wind Energy Glossary. Perfect. You can see here that my, uh, my naming convention uh, does not use spaces. Okay, that's not proper IRI construction. I'm also identifying between uh, key terminology here for wind energy glossary. If everything is lowercase, it's just not quite as, as usable in my opinion. The visibility is either owner or public. I'm going to say here that the resource for the time being is owner. I just want myself to see it. I can change that in the future. And the status here, we have an option to say draft, unstable, testing, stable, deprecated, or archaic. I'm going to go, this is draft, okay? The resource is in preliminary stages of development. And what the status really facilitates is essentially life cycle management for data creators, but also sets an expectation on the consumption side. So if I'm a user consuming resources and something's in a draft or an unstable state, then I shouldn't be disappointed if something changes or maybe if it's even deleted or something like this. Okay, so let me go ahead then. What we've covered is the owner, we've got the IRI construction, visibility and status. This is just in the very early stages, so I keep tend to keep it owner, private and draft. So let's go ahead and you can see here that we've registered an IRI within core, perfect. And uh, what, we, what we're prompted with now is metadata details, where we've got general metadata, usage, license, permissions level metadata, metadata pertaining to the original source, which of course is the wind energy glossary that I've referenced earlier on, and some arbitrary additional metadata which we may end up populating further on. So for the time being, I'm gonna get busy and populate this metadata and I'll come back to you once this is populated. Okay, folks, I populated the, our metadata here. We're provided our name, description, resource type, myself as the creator. Uh, I'm going to actually add in here the contributor, of course, Eric Edward, uh, Edward Norman. I've referenced the original work. Uh, via the uh, OMV reference field and I've linked through to an alternative reference for it as well just to provide comprehensive um, credit to that work. What I tend to do at this point in time is actually register the resource before I go any further. Why do I do this? I do this because um, keyboards, clicks, 
back forth browser data retention in the browser it's these are all variables which can essentially destroy the work that you're doing here and i think it's always good to just to save your work and i'm going to explain what essentially this does so we go ahead register the resource it's going to take a bit of time for that to actually happen that's absolutely fine once it's done you can click ok you can see that we've got a prompt which indicates successful registration which is great and you can see that now um, essentially this is our landing page for our resource so we could open a brand new window and what core has done is it's registered a resource on the web as core.esipfed.org forward slash ont forward slash esip forward slash wind energy glossary great of note here as well is the fact that we have versions and as we're going along as, as, as content creators um, as I'd mentioned for me it's good practice to register uh, it's, it's essentially a save for your resource it means that you don't lose any data this statuses and visibility can be changed at any point in time as well you can additionally as the owner for this resource you can unregister the resource at some point in time you can go ahead and edit metadata associated with the resource and you can download the resource in a variety of formats so very very flexible here and already we can interact with this resource via the rich set of rest apis which i mentioned earlier on in the tutorial today so moving forward moving on we end up at data okay which are essentially term sets so what we'll do is we'd edit a new version and what we have is the option now to enter term sets you know what are term sets essentially just a collection of terms that, that, that uh, have associated properties okay so we're going to go ahead here create a term set there's some documentation here relating to that term set itself and the IRI construction we're looking for an IRI which represents the term set and um, and essentially how this works is we have the IRI we created for the primary resource which is the Wind Energy Glossary and we append our local name again we can create a local name or we can enter a full IRI in this case I'm entering a local name where does the local name come for our term sets well we've, we've seen earlier on that within the Wind Energy Glossary that there it's split into three sections electricity transmission net network wind turbine components and wind energy challenges issues and solutions and as you can see the the way that this is laid out is within these three sections we have an initial column which is the um alphabetically ordered vocabulary terms and on the right hand side the second column we have the descriptions or definitions as far as the accuracy of this glossary for these uh, these terms which is great it provides us with a lot of information covering you know three categories the other thing I will mention about this resource is these figures are, are, are very very uh, insightful very helpful so anyway what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my first category which is going to be a term set you can see here that I'm not including spaces electricity transmission network no spaces I'm going to go ahead and register that IRI okay what you can see here is that we have the ability to add a property okay you also have the ability to start registering terms for this term set so we would register the term in column one and then we register a property and a property for example could be a description it could be could be a, a preferred label uh, an alternate label maybe being an abbreviation or something like that so what i'm going to go ahead and do then is grab the terms from the left hand side of this particular section of the glossary I'm going to manually enter these into the first column of the new term set window 
and I'll come back once that's done. Okay, folks, we've populated the first column here, which were our glossary terms. Uh, so we've got our first term set, essentially, at this point in time. You could go ahead and save your progress. To be honest with you, you could go ahead and save your progress at this point in time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a property. So we click on the property button. And here um, we are asked to uh, add the IRI for the property we want to utilize. In this case, what I find very useful is to click on full IRI. And what will happen is we're provided with a tip which, which says consider using a standard property. And essentially what we have here is a number of established, you know, uh, from established vocabularies, qualifiers, entities which we want to utilize. Everybody else is already using these ones, so why not? It just makes life a lot easier for us. I'm going to go ahead and collect and uh, select the uh, Dublin Core description. Excellent. And what we end up doing here is being able to select for this column, we've got a description for each one of our terms in the term set. Fantastic. So I'll go ahead and I'll populate these descriptions for each term now. Back over to the vocabulary, uh, to the glossary, picking up description and pasting that value in here. Great. I'll come back once I'm done here, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. And you, as you can see, I've populated the second column, which is our uh, core description. Some folk might be asking why I've used description rather than definition here, SCOS definition. Um, you can have only really one definition of something. You can have maybe several descriptions. Descriptions are a bit more subjective. And this document is local to some degree. Okay, there's a lot of mention within this document of West Michigan. Okay, and uh, that's why I'm using description. Okay, at this point, as you can see, we're starting to, we're getting past basic data entry here, or sub, we're getting towards more substantive data entry here. For safety, I usually go ahead and uh, register this resource just to save my progress. You can enter a comment if you wish. I'll just add added initial term set with associated uh, descriptions. Fantastic. Proceed with registration. You can see here that we've had a successful registration. The ontology IRI stays the same. However, we now have multiple versions. You can see by the timestamp here that it took some 12 minutes, you know, 11 minutes to update that information in there. Um, and that's essentially that you can query or you can access your resource based upon the version of, of the resource, the IRI, essentially. You can request that via the REST API, uh, which facilitates really mm, more consistent usage of the resources. So what I'm going to go ahead here and do is I'd noticed within my glossary that some of the terms actually have um, alternate labels, okay? So these are uh, summarized AC, DC, okay? Megawatts, etc. cetera. A renewable portfolio standards, RPS. So I'm going to go ahead and um, enter these under I create a new version, edit new version. Okay, I'm not registering it yet. I'm adding a property here. And a property is going to be from the IRI, standard property. And it's going to be, um, well, it's going to be SCOS, but it's not going to be note. It's going to be alt label. Okay, these are alternative labels. And not every single resource has an altern alternative label, okay? Let's see which ones do. Alter uh, alternating current does. It's AC. There we go. Perfect. I'll just zoom out here a bit. Alternating current does AC. 
direct current does is DC. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and populate these. I'll come back once it's done. Okay, and we're back. We've populated all our alt labels. It's down to you if you want to save your progress at this time and register a resource. I'm going to go ahead here and add a pref label for each one of these. Pref label, pref label is essentially, again, it's SCOS. It's not definition. I'm going to change this to pref label. Pref label essentially facilitates us referencing this in a, maybe a more natural way. So I would, for the IRI for uh, alternating current, I would lowercase and separate for space. Okay. And that's the way that I would usually enter pref labels. After this stage, I would always, always go and save my progress by registering a new version of this resource. I'll go ahead here, folks, and populate um, all of these pref labels, and I'll be back. Hey guys, we're back. We've populated right now for the electricity transmission network term set. We've added in alphabetical order as per, you know, the definition of a glossary. All of our terms within the term set. We have a, a description for each of those terms. We've got an alt label. And we have a pref label. We could continue to add properties here to our heart's desire. Um, I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this tutorial. You can see here that we have one uh, term set here. How would we go about adding another term set? Very easily. You can see here that if we scroll out a bit, we can add a t we can add a term here, or we can. That's that's how we'd add a term to a term set. How would we go about creating a new term set? Very easy. We can uh, insert a term set to the left or to the right. In this case, I'm inserting one to the right. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it wind wind turbine components. You can see it's the same camel case. We're going to go ahead and register IRI, IRI. And you can see here that we can now toggle between our term sets. The data entry is the exact same. We create our terms for the term set. We add properties. And we continue. By the time this entire glossary is finished, we'll have three term sets available here. And those will be registered. What I typically do at this point, again, is I'll register this resource, completed uh, initial term set and associated properties and created new term set. Perfect. Proceed with the registration. Successful registration. Excellent. This is already populated out to the web where we can see straight away that we've got nothing populated into or everything populated into our first term set we can go ahead and actually access that term set via its IRI and the second term set which we just created right now we've got nothing for it but we could go ahead and access those things what's actually quite neat here as well is that we can go ahead and um, access these individual terms within the term set now. And you can see that for any given term within a term set, we've got our description, we've got the type of term which this uh, belongs to, the type of term set that this belongs to, we've got our alternative label, and we've got our pref label. And that's great. So hopefully, guys, what this has provided you with is a overview of um, creation, vocabulary creation within the ESIP community ontology repository. Very, very useful feature. And um, we'll be going on in the future to cover mappings. How would you, how would you use uh, your mapping to maybe link your glossary or your vocabulary to other resources, both within the ESIP Community Ontology Repository, as well as other resources out there on the web. I, I don't know if anybody noticed that just at the end. I was not logged in 
and you could see that my glossary was, I could not see it. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to log out. You cannot see my resource because it was visibility was set to owner only. So if I go ahead and sign in, you should be able to see that the resource is now available. Okay, anonymously, you cannot see this resource. When I'm logged in, you can see the resource. Okay, folks, I'm going to close up now. Again, thank you very much for more information on core, vocabulary creation, etc. Please either head over to the esip-core at list.esipfed.org mailing list or the core Slack channel under the ESIP Fed organization workspace. Okay, folks, thank you.